Hello and welcome to Tech24, or should I say, Ni Hao, Huai En Ni. Mandarin will be the number one language on the net by 2015, and China is speeding up creation of content. And in Test24, we introduce you to a water-based paint that uses carbon to conduct electricity. But before we get to those stories, it's time for the figure of the week, brought to you by Le Journal du Net. Competitors on mobile operating systems and mapping markets, Google and Apple are still partnering on the mobile search market. To remain the default web search engine on iPhones and iPads, Google paid Apple $700 million. Both rivals have indeed signed a partnership agreement under which the search engine pays its position around $3 for every Apple brand device sold. The royalty paid by Google should at this rate exceed the billion dollar mark by 2014. Moving on now. 42% of China's population is connected to the Internet. That's 564 million users. And since 2012, China is also the first country in the world in patents. We have seen the world move from made in China to designed in China. It is true that a large part of that market is cloned. Think of Baidu, inspired by Google, Renrain, which is references on Facebook, and Weibo, a copy of Twitter, and Youku, inspired by YouTube. The Great Firewall, the nickname of, for China's internet censoring and filtering technology, has helped protect these initiatives by keeping out Western competition. And it looks like the strategy has indeed allowed Chinese internet companies to develop. Beyond the success story of the world's biggest messaging app, WeChat, and its 300 million members, or those of the world's first three e-commerce sites, all Chinese, there's even the Chinese engineer, Nan Shu Lu, that has just been awarded at the Net Explo for her electronic tattoos used to track medical information. Mark Edwards joins me now. Mark, all these, are these signs that China is no longer a nation of reverse engineers? Oh, I love, I love that term, at least reverse engineers, euphemism for copycat. But let's look at the facts. China, as you, as you said, is the number one filer of international patents worldwide. And that's increased tenfold in the last decade with an annual increase of 30%. Now, if we look at international companies and the success of Chinese companies in the international market, in the Fortune 500 in 1995, there were only three Chinese companies. 10 years later, there were 18 Chinese companies. How many do you think, Annelies, there were last year? Um, I don't know, maybe 30? 30, that's not a bad guess, but quite far off. It was actually 73, which wow. means they must be doing something right. And let's not forget, innovation and copycats tend to go hand in hand. Henry Ford giving us the, uh, you know, giving us the first moving assembly line in the US actually took a lot, copied a lot of, of those ideas from existing practices, industrial practices in Europe. And at the end of the day, are we ready for China 2.0? Innovation, copycats going hand in hand. And it is said that internet has transformed Chinese society, but social networks are in the process of revolutionizing it. 91% of Chinese internet users are on social networks. I guess 140 characters say a lot more in Mandarin. Well, that's, that, it's very true. I think it's more a, uh, an idea that Chinese people always like to be in communication with their family at all times. And that could have something to do with the fact that, you know, most of the time you've got three generations of Chinese living under one roof. Now, it's also, there's a social phenomenon, which is the migrant worker. Now, the migrant worker is a person who's gone from rural China all the way into uh, the city or into big cities and millions and millions of them uh, are moving the whole time. And uh, it means that all of these people, they're uprooted from what they know best and therefore they want to stay in touch with their families. And what they're doing is they're using local brands which have been championed by the Chinese government effectively by getting rid of most of the international competition. So it actually means that these guys are using local brands and there's millions and millions of them trying to communicate with each other. All right, thanks for that, Mark. We'll move on now because it's time for Test 24. In today's test segment, we take you to London for a sparky idea. A group of friends who met at art school have created an electric mix, a water-based paint that uses carbon to conduct electricity. They call it 
conductive paint. We were exploring this idea of kind of technology being everywhere and you know why couldn't it be in the, on the surface of a book or on a table or on a wall and we came up with the idea for um, making a conductive medium that could do that which which is how we came up with the idea for paint. We sell it as a pen, this is bare paint, and we also sell it in a jar and the idea is that you can use this to prototype all kinds of electronics, circuits, interactive surfaces. And the possibilities are limitless. You can build a sensor-lit house, fun birthday cards, a sound machine, or even use it to interact with your wall. One of the cool things about this material is that it has the ability to store a charge. So if we connect a pad of paint or any image that we've drawn with the paint to a power source, it's actually holding the electricity in the black area, which is the paint, which means that if some other conductive object, such as my hand, um, interacts with it, it can actually trigger uh, something, which means that any surface from paper to cardboard to the wall can become interactive. And to do that, all you need is a brush or roller and the surface of your choice. Walls, furniture, clothes. Despite being dark and gunky, this is a product with powerful potential. And you are the one choosing its uses. People email us all the time asking, I've got this idea, can I do this, can I do that? That's always been the way that we develop things so obviously we come up with ideas internally but then we almost reinforce them by checking whether or not okay is that is that right would that make sense if we did this would you like that or so where can we see the product going well the sky is the limit for bare conductive okay maybe not the sky but everything around us we really see that there's a huge potential in industry for just printed electronics um, as a new kind of way of people interacting with the objects around with them. So some of the things that we see are in packaging or advertising, just like printed posters or boxes that actually interact with you when you touch, whether that's generating a sound or music or triggering a light, so that everything around you becomes alive rather than static. This technology is literally around the corner. We already have projects that are um, sort of exploring the potential of how this can be used. Um, one of the pro projects is um, actually sort of like a postcard, where basically it's a little postcard that you get, and you put it into a box, and then it plays a song, let's say, maybe of the image on the postcard. So it's definitely, it's not like the future future. This is the future that's here already, and we're really hoping to be part of it. The future. That's where this team is concentrating all its energies. And that's all we have time for. Thank you for watching this edition of Tech24. Don't forget, you can give us your feedback on the show via Facebook or on Twitter. And we leave you today with what happens when social media meets the real world. Created for Social Media Week 2013, which takes place this week around the world, this video shows why nobody wants to be your friend when you suck at social media. Really so Stay tuned. Much. I'll see you next week. Anyone know where I can sign up for a yoga class? So you want to be my friend? Dad's like no one's watching. Go f yourself, creep. I want to work out, but I also want a pizza. Dilemma. Security's making me leave. Sad face. <laughs>